Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar and today we got a vlog style rant? Is this a rant? I'm not quite sure it's a rant because usually I don't really get all that ranty but I might get today. I want to talk about incarnate weapons or the evolving weapons that for me at the very least were the highlight of the Angels of Zaraman expansion. Now let me begin by saying the following, I like these weapons. Honestly, I am enjoying these weapons, I am grateful that they've been introduced into the game and I think they are definitely a worthwhile addition. But there are many points where not only they can be improved, but I expected a bit more straight from the get-go. But first things first, what are the evolving weapons? You got five in total right now, you got two primaries, one secondary and two melee. Three of them were launched with the Angels of Zaraman expansion. One primary, one melee, and one secondary, and two were added with the Echoes of Zaraman. I want to say complimentary patch, which fixed a whole lot of things, and fixing is one of the topics I want to tackle. When these weapons came out, they came out heavily bugged, unfortunately. When you have a brand new type of weapon, or a brand new Warframe, with cool, interesting new mechanics, and they come out bugged, that causes a whole lot of confusion within the community, which I, as a content creator, usually need to navigate more or less. This is normal for Warframe content. This is what we accept as a community, apparently. New content comes out a little bit more early than it could have, but it's a little bit on the buggy side. And a very good part of the bugs were only switched a whole lot later with the Echoes of Zaraman patch. So, what can I tell you? It wasn't exactly a fantastic experience for a fan such as myself. I'm a fan of Warframe, when new content comes out, I jump right in and I deal with the bugs. It's not a, a super big deal, but it's definitely not something I would call ideal. Now, the first evolving weapon is the Latum, and you get this one for 3,000 standing. Well, the blueprint, you still gotta farm all the materials, which is not exactly super quick, especially when it comes to the uh, Void Plume pinions. For that, you're gonna need to hunt down some angels, which is fun! for the first five or ten times and then it gets super tedious, so there is also that to bear in mind. Here's the weird part though, the Latum is arguably one of the most interesting and most powerful evolving weapons you can get right now and it's introductory, it's at the base level, you don't really need a whole lot of standing to get it, only 3000 and you don't need to be a super high rank with the Steadfast either. Thumbs up for that, absolutely bloody fantastic, I highly recommend the Latum. Now recently it did get a bit of a nerf, and of course some players jumped the gun and said Oh, it's terrible now, how horrible, they destroyed the Latum. The nerf was minor, tiny, tiny, the Latum is still a full-blown monster, you don't really need to worry about it. And the nerf, if I remember correctly, was this one at the final talent, final evolution, evolution 5. 400% uh, damage for 10 seconds instead of 20 seconds, stacks up 3 times. It's fine! It's fine, trust me, it's fine. It's still a full-blown monster. You shouldn't have any issue with the uh, uptime on this one. The developer claimed they only nerfed it because they wanted to add some uh, build diversity to the weapon. Uh, and I'll talk more about build diversity later. So they want us to pick up Reapers Plenty, which nobody picks up. The, the other good option, obviously, being Devouring Attrition, which is normally... Meta, essentially, with another talent at level 4 uh, on most evolving weapons, but again, we'll talk more about the diversity just a tad later. If you're going for any of these weapons, if you want to experience any of these weapons, go for the Latum, you will not be disappointed. And if you want to see what this absolute monster can do, mm -hmm, link in the card right now. Next, the Inodem. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not much of a melee guy simply because I'm not a fan of e-spam. Not that it's not beautiful, not that it's not powerful, not that it can't be fantastic, it's just that it's not a me thing. I'm still waiting for the E to revamp and make melee a bit more interesting. But I did try the Predos. The Predos is the other melee weapon, the one that was launched initially. The problem with this one, you had to be higher ranked with the Steadfast to actually get it. And another problem was the fact that you needed to get it, even if you didn't care about it, if you wanted to unlock the final evolution of the other weapons. Because the final challenge is complete the mission having a uh, incarnate weapon or an evolving weapon slotted in each slot. So you had to get this one. You, you didn't have the Inodem back then. And that my friends, was a pain in the arse. Now some players were smart, and on release they realized that, hold on, if I just unequip everything else, and I just keep one incarnate weapon, that'll work, and that did work for about 16 hours before they patched it, so bear that one in mind. Back to the Pratus, though. How can I explain this one? Do you guys know the Cronin Prime? Yeah? You love the Cronin Prime? Cronin Prime came out with Zephyr Prime. I was a fledgling Tenno back then, and I love the Cronin Prime because it looks cool. It's Tom Fuzz, and they're cutty, they're sharp and stuff. 
but when it came out, players were kinda eh about it, simply because the base range on the Chrono and Prime is super small, and back then, plus range mods were percentage based off the base range of the weapon, get it? So even if you add plus range to it back then, it didn't really have a big impact on the weapon, thankfully nowadays plus range melee mods are flat, they add a flat extra range, so that made weapons such as the Chrono and Prime a whole lot more powerful. Getting back on topic to the Prados, if you want a better Chrono and Prime, the Prados is definitely the way to go. I promise you will enjoy this one, but you got a bit of farming until you get it. And next up on the list, the Fenmore. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weapon. Now this is a rifle which is extremely painful to use in its normal fire form, just like the Latum for the most part, but after you get a couple of headshots, this one goes full nuclear, it goes heavy weapon, it goes arc gun bullet hose like you have never seen a bullet hose in Warframe before. It's absolutely fantastic, it can wipe the map clear of whatever stands before you. It doesn't matter the level, it doesn't matter the target, you will love the absolute raw destructive power of this one. I highly recommend it once again. It did came out initially a little bit bugged and then it was fixed but thankfully I got a full and detailed guide after the fix for this one. Look at the cards right now. Again I highly recommend this one. Isn't that counterintuitive? I'm not of that opinion. Fine, arc pistols can be better than a shotgun if they actually hurt more than deep but, but it doesn't. But, but it doesn't. That's the problem. The incarnate form of this weapon, unfortunately, is simply less powerful than its normal form. That is not to say that this is a weak weapon. Oh my god, it packs one incredible punch, especially if you love shotguns that have a strun style of reload. You guys remember shell by shell? That kind of reload style that I thought went extinct with Warframe? No, no, we still have it in this brand new weapon and I do recommend the weapon as long as you accept the caveat that going in card and form is counterintuitive, you shouldn't really go in card and form. And again, if you want to see a guide, look at the cards right now. I love the weapon, it's cool, it's gimmicky, it's quirky, but now we gotta address what the incarnate form should be because if it's not a flat out power increase like it has been for all the rest of the weapons except the fell arcs then from my point of view they should do very very different things why can't we have an incarnate weapon transformed from melee to range hmm? we have spear guns in warframe there's a lot of potential there Think about it, you guys remember spear guns, they're really cool, they're very thematic, very flavorful weapons in the game and I love them, but right now they're a little bit in the dust, they're not really all that powerful considering the current meta, but they are weapons which are extremely cool to use. And subjectively speaking, when we're talking evolution, when we're talking incarnate form, if we're gonna go for something entirely different, then we can have something like, hey, this weapon deals a good amount of AoE damage, and when you need single target damage, we can switch to incarnate form, yeah, and it delivers a single super strong projectile, but it only affects a single target. We can do something like that. So it becomes a trade-off, right? It becomes use the right form at the right time. That would be fantastic. Now. Another missed opportunity from my humble point of view when it comes to these weapons is the animation. When the weapon transforms from one thing to another, unfortunately, it's not as cool as I thought it would be. You know, it follows the thematic of the Angels of Zataman with the Void, the Curse, or whatever the hell it is, it's not important. It follows that thematic, but I don't know why in my head it would do this Transformers thing, this which might have been cooler. It's, again, it's a subjective thing, so it doesn't really carry a whole lot of weight. My biggest gripe with the evolving weapons, outside of the fact that you needed uh, one of each to fully unlock its potential, which I don't believe it's fair, perhaps some of us are not interested, maybe I just want the melee weapons, okay, I just want to play with the melee weapons, why are you forcing the other weapons down my throat, I don't want to play with them, I don't want to play with them, let me just play with the melee, why am I forced to get these to unlock the full power of the Prados and vice versa. That's one of my big gripes with the current system. Another one is the fact that you gotta visit Cavaliero to actually play around with the evolutions. If I am to play around with the evolutions, I can only do it from here. It would be much better, much more streamlined if we could change them from the simulacrum or the arsenal or any arsenal depending on where we're at. I don't see why we need to visit Cavaliero, but thumbs up for it not costing any resources to actually change the talents. You can change the talents with no cost whatsoever, except the time cost it takes you to get down over here. And the final thing, which I really, really am not a fan of, build diversity. Now. When they were announced, my hope was that these evolutions 
would create actual build diversity, and they haven't. There are a lot of throwaway talents on this weapon. Now let me show you exactly what I mean by throwaway talents. I mean talents which are there just for filler perks, which are there just for the sake of having something there. We're gonna take a look at Evolution 5 for the latest weapon to be released, the latest incarnate weapon, the Felarx. Take a look at this one. Agile Executor at level 5 gained 50% ammo efficiency while aim gliding and sliding. Really? Why? Why would you even, when you put it on the same level with something like Devastating Attrition, 50% chance to deal plus 2000% damage to non, uh, on non-critical hits? This is obviously the way to go. Even this one is pretty meh. Rupture Plentitude on punch for free enemies, so you gotta go for free enemies, so you need a clump up ability or something like that to get like consistent value out of this one. Plus 70% ammo efficiency for 20 seconds. Oh, fantastic! But it doesn't even bloody work in the evolving form, in the incarnate form of this one. Not that it matters considering how powerful that is. So there you go. This is what I mean by throwaway talents. Talents which are there just for the sake of them being there, which leads me to believe that perhaps they ran out of time. Perhaps they had to put something there and they just simply put something there. Perhaps they had much grander plans and they were limited either by time, budget, or whatever else platform concerns. Because trust me, no developer, from my experience, no developer that I know wants to put out lame things. They just simply don't want to do that. It's not what they do. So if they do do that, that means there had to be some constraints that led to decisions such as... Uh, such as this. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to build diversity, my friends, most weapons, most rage weapons use this one. Devastating attrition, 50% chance to deal plus 2000% damage on non-critical hits. This is a copy-paste talent that you will find on other evolving weapons as well. Here's another copy-paste talent that synergizes beautifully well with it. It's this one. Plus 20% status chance, minus 10% critical chance. Uh, this is called Racking Wrath, on the other is called something different, something different Wrath. Again, mostly kind of the same thing, and this is your meta setup for the weapon. The one that slightly differed was the Latham, because on this one we were using the plus 400% damage for 10 seconds, stacks up 3 times. Uh, it used to be 20 seconds, yeah, now it's 10 seconds, it's not a big deal, like I mentioned earlier, it's still fine. But here you go, you have the same talent right here, Devouring Attrition, 50% chance to deal 2000 damage, non-critical hits, if I go to level 4, what do you know, plus 20% status chance, minus 10% critical chance, you get how that one works, yes? And if I am to equip the Fenmore, because why would you not equip the Fenmore, you will see that even that one has similar talents. So I'm afraid that what I was hoping for, legitimate choice... And build diversity hasn't really been achieved, at least from my humble point of view. By all intents and purposes, my friends, feel free to correct me. And again, the Fenmore, take a look. <laughs> this one, Devouring Attrition, 50% chance at 2000%. And at level 4, the same, plus 20% with minus 10% critical chance. I think this one has the 10 and 10. Yeah, you get 10% critical chance, 10% status chance as an optional talent. You get the same one on the shotgun as well. That's my problem with the weapons. It's not that they're not great. I honestly believe this has been super successful and I love the weapons and I love playing with them, but I just believe they could be so much more. But I'm just one man and that's just one man's opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you love them? Do you not love them? What do you think that the developer could have done better? What changes would you bring if you were the dev? Okay, this is the question I always like to pose. If you're the developer and you got unlimited resources, unlimited time, you're pressured by nothing and you can do pretty much whatever you want, <laughs> ideal situation, I know, what would you do? As always, my name is Vilazar, thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!